بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الرحمة المهداة والنعمة المهداة وعلى من ولاه وذو الله مشور الأنفس من سيئات الأعمال ويهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضل فلن تجد ولي ومرشد أما بعد دي دي one of the etiquettes of selling and buying and engaging in business is not to swear by Allah during the selling. Because more likely a person swear by Allah, he might not be accurate than my lie. They say, Wallahi, this is the best in the market. Wallahi, this is the best things. Wallahi, I bought it with the, uh, uh, I bought it with this much or I'm going to lose money selling it to you. If a person swear by Allah, that was, was, is a problem. That's why he says, min bala wallahi wallahi. They said, a person should not say wallahi, billahi, this kind of thing. Right? Uh, and also, they say that the person who um, uh, delivering, delivering merchants has to avoid, uh, you know, lying in promises. Say, I will deliver it tomorrow. If you come next week, it'll be finished. Next week comes, says, give me another week. Another week, now it'll be another week. He said a person should be careful of delivering on time, especially if he knows he will not be delivering on time. Somebody, um, uh, a developer, for example, he said at a time, he says, well, one year I'm gonna give you this house complete. He knows he has a lot of business and a lot of things, he says, if I start building his home, he cannot, he's not going to drop me in the middle because there's no way. But he has to, he's stuck with me for, 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 uh, for the rest of the time. Therefore, I'm going to really, after the a year, I'm going to say, it's not yet, not yet. I'm going to buy another six months. But he knows that if he says one year and a half, maybe that person will say, I'll go with somebody else. And then they said, I would really do it in a year, but he's lying about it. Is that also not permissible, right? Uh, and the, the, the author, the, the saying that if a person were to lie about something to, to sell, it will take away the blessing, the barakah of what he uh, selling, or the money come from it. Uh, in the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Three people Allah will not uh, be pleased with them in the day of judgment. Utul al-Mustakbir. Utul al-Mustakbir is a, is a person who is arrogant and, and harsh. Utul al-Mustakbir. Wannanun uh, A person who gives and then he brags. He says, I give you this. I help you with this. I give you the money. I did the manan ba'atiyati. وَمُنْفِقُ سِلَعَتِهِ بِيَمِينِهِ A person who swear by Allah, lying to sell things. You know, unfortunately, it used to be sometime when more than that, people would be selling things, and it's not selling fast enough for them. They fabricate hadith, not only lying. They fabricate hadith to sell. Somebody selling eggplant, and he's not, he's not selling fast enough. He will say, uh, uh, the, is, the hadith says, whoever want to eat the blessed food should eat uh, eggplant. Well, people want people to marry their, you know, from their tribe. They say, they, they said, whoever married from this tribe is being blessed the rest of their life. It's kind of things, you know. All of this are fabricated, they're called fabricated hadith. Wadda' al hadith. Wadda' al hadith or hadith of فإذا كان الثناء على السلعة المصطة كمكروها من حيث إنه فضول لا يزيد تفرز. he said he said it disliked also to swear by Allah even a person truthful on what they selling. it worse when a person is lying. you know. Um, the second that the person must declare all the deficiency. Of the thing that they're selling, that's a very difficult. If 
if a person knows the essential things with the merchant that they're selling is not there, or a deficiency that a person might not see but is essential, a person should declare that, should tell them there's something wrong with this, I'm telling, selling it as, as is to you. Okay? فَإِنْ أَخْفَهَا كَانَ ظَالِمًا غَاشًا If a person were to hide the, the deficiency and sell it to somebody, that person become unjust and a very uh, deceiving person. Okay? Uh, he gave an example. He said, if somebody wants to sell you a fabric and he knows there's something wrong with it, you know, with, with the makeup of the fabric. Therefore, he is selling to you in a very dim light. I said, yeah. He said, when you go to the sun, and you see it under the sun, it's not like what he's, uh, he told you. That's not permissible. He made the example of that, Imam al -Razali. Or he said, if somebody uh, uh, opened a box of shoes, shows you only one, one shoe, he said, this is what the shoe looked like. But he know that somebody have returned the shoes because the other uh, shoe has a problem. That person have lied. And it's not permissible for them to do so. <coughs> and uh, we talked about the hadith of Rasulullah <laughs> That Rasulullah said to the person who did the uh, cover the wheat and does not show the wet the uh, wheat and the Prophet put his hand on it and so it's wet. He said, why don't you, why didn't you tell people it's wet? He said, Asawatu Sama. Rain came, and you know, it's raining, it's snowing or raining. He said, but you put the dry one on the top of it. Why didn't you put the, the wet one on the top? So the person not be deceived, be clear about it. You know, what is the, what is the common factor between all of these things we're saying. Those are called moral values that shows the integrity of individuals. Honesty, decency, being straightforward. All of these are the virtue a Muslim should have. In every contract you do, any contract you sign, straightforward. You know why? You know why? Why, young lady? Why you have to be straightforward? Because this here, this heart here, will be exposed in the day of judgment. That the thing that is, is inside a person is concealed. For a person has to be straightforward. And if a person taking other people's money by lying to them, that that every penny that came through that line, a person has eaten haram actually. Therefore, Islam says the standards of, of, of business is deal with the, what we call it, internal law, not external law. You can ask yourself, what the difference between the spiritual discourse and legal discourse in Islam? Do you know the difference? The legal discourse, it tells you this thing's right and this is wrong. The spiritual discourse telling you not this right or wrong, but telling you that be careful of, of, of violating the law of the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the, the, uh, the uh, a law being administered by human beings. For example, a person right, right or wrong in their work. They know you have to fulfill your job and so forth. That being administered by human beings. The human the being the, the one who supervising that. But the external law 
is when a person says, I'm not going to do it because Allah is watching, because Allah is seeing. And that's why uh, the, the ethics is what we need in the society first, before the law. Teaching people ethics. And that's why religious institutions, they are crucial and essential of creating a good citizen. Seriously. And I say that even when I sit with government, I sit with individual that says, you have to believe the mosque, the church, the sinning, I should produce a good citizen. That's not lie, honest, turn for word, have integrity. You know, that's what you need. Before I, and, and that's why I say a good Muslim in America is a good citizen. Period. A good Muslim is a good citizen. You know? He doesn't need even the government to ask him not to break the law. He stay within the law because he believes his moral values. When he does business, he knows that he cannot cheat his employees, he cannot do inside trading. You know, he knows that or she knows that. For they are the one who stay with the boundaries called the hudud, do the law, subhanahu wa ta'ala, before the boundaries of the law. Okay. Now Um, the, the other things that he says قال, oh, now, he says that the, the, there's the rights of Allah and the rights of people you know those two dimensions you heard of them have you heard of Hukuk Allah and Hukuk al -ibad? The whole Hiya Ulum al is about that. The first volume, we talked about Hakullah. But the rights of Allah is connected to the rights of people. Not only that, Allah will let go or forgive the things that was considered His rights on you. But He will not forgive the rights of people unless you ask them to forgive you, then He will forgive them. You know that? Therefore, rights of people in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that Allah will not let go unless the people whom you wrong, they say what? Well, it's okay. It's okay. Allah, forgive. That's what it is. Now, uh, therefore, he says, in the Talbiza al Ayyub wa Tarwija wa Sila Allah is in the Furisqi. He said, in order for a person to know that why they should, should stick to the uh, boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they must believe cheating, deceiving people in business does not increase your risk, does it? Does it? Make no mistake. Everyone who would deceive people to lie to gain money by deceiving them, they will see the lost here in dunya before the akhirah. They have to see it before they die. What is uh, Inran? Called Inran? Yeah. The big executive, they want to uh, they want quick money. All the sub mortgages, they want quick money. What happened? Some of them went to jail, business went down, everyone lost. It's true or not? Even those who have been bailed out, been bailed out, the, the, the banks and so forth, the, the exposure, the, exposed, the way that people are being exposed, is still is some humiliation come to that person. That it does not go. And Allah does not put barakah on it. There's no blessing on the money of a person deceive little guys and take their money and rip them off. It doesn't. So the person has to be careful on that. Taib. Uh, uh, they, they say that uh, there's a very interesting story here. A man 
he told his children who want to become smart, he has a cow, only one cow. He sells the milk of the cow. The children said, listen, we have only one cow. Look to the neighbors, have many cows. We have to increase the milk, our milk by mixing with water. The father disapproved. He said, don't do this, boys. Boys, don't be smart. They said, Dad, just leave it to us. No one will know. They started doing that and selling the milk. And over a sudden, a flood came and took only the cow. He said to them, this is the amount of water you have put in the milk. It becomes so much, took the cow there. SubhanAllah. And imagine, a cow is symbolism. Oh, this is a true story. But it's, it is the people who wanted to compound interest and have people to lose all interest in housing. The market psh, went down, one door to buy a house. Okay? It become a, 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 a problem for everybody. The things that they made so quickly, profit, is gone overnight. Don't you know that some bank, they become bankrupt overnight? It's true or not in America? Vibrated. It went so quick, it went so quick. This is a statement, by the way. The haram disappeared from the way that it came. It came this way, live this way. طيب. الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد البايعان إذا صدقاه ونصحاه ورك لهما في بيعهما The two people who do in business if they become honest and they become truthful Allah will bring blessing on the transaction If they conceal and lie Allah take away the blessing from their transaction okay. And he said the hands of Allah will be on the two partners of business as long as none of them have deceived the other person or betray them. If anyone de betray the other person, Allah take his hand off them, leave them to themselves. Meaning that they become under the protection of Allah. If they lie, they're completely, uh, they are on their own. طيب المعنى الثاني الذي لا بد من اعتقاده لا يتم النصح ويتيسر عليه أن يعلم أن ربح الآخرة وغناها خير من ربح الدنيا. وأن فوائد أموال الدنيا تنقضي بانقضاء العمر تبقى مظالمها وأوزارها فكيف يستجيز العاقل أن يستبدل الذي هو أدنى بالذي هو خير والخير كله في سلامة الدين سبحان الله Look at this beautiful statement He says A person will have unshakable belief Must have unshakable belief That the prophets of Akhira Is a lasting prophet And prophet of dunya It will be expired what the hell will she make? He says, because the fawa'id, the benefit of the wealth of dunya, it ends with the ending of the person's life. And the wrongdoing of a person have done, it remains. A person have wronged somebody and get money. He dies, leave the money, but the wrong is in what? In the book. It doesn't die with the person. The ghulm doesn't die. The injustice does not die. But the money what? Being used by somebody else because a person dies. Right? He said, and how come a wise person will make a such a trade by replacing the what lasting, which is akhirah, with this which is does not last, which is the dunya. And the, all the good that the person seek is to seek to have his spiritual estate intact. Protect us here. He said, protect your spiritual estate, not your material estate. You know what I mean? The person said that I'm, I'm a, is it, what do they call material estate? You call this you call it the state of someone? You know? That the material estate if you protect it 
or think, they think that you're protecting it in the expense of spiritual estate, you lose your spiritual estate and you lose, you, you lose also your material estate. كسر الدنيا والآخرة ذلك هو الخصال المبين قال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تزال لا إله إلا الله تدفع عن الخلق صحط الله ولم يؤثروا صفقة دنياهم على آخرتهم he said, as, he said it, la, ilaha, la ilaha illallah the statement of la ilaha illallah continues to protect the creation of Allah or human being from the wrath of Allah as long they don't prefer the dunya over the akhirah. وفي لفظ الآخر ما لم يبالوا ما نقص من دنياهم بسلام دينهم فإن فعلوا ذلك وقالوا لا إله إلا الله قال تعالى كذبتم لستم بصادقين. This is this is the righteous people used to do that. Somebody will doubt how much the weight of something, even gold, and it would add a little bit to it. Somebody next to him said, listen, what are you doing? He said, yeah, I'm not sure. The, the, the scale was not exact. He said, yeah, you're going to lose money doing this. You have to be more careful. He said, listen, I'd rather to lose some of the dunya than lose, lose some of the deen. I'd rather to lose some of the dunya than, than losing some of the deen. And sometimes, you know, you and I who been always presented by those options sometimes. Deen or dunya, deen or dunya, deen or dunya. If you get the dunya, it will be judgmental to the deen. It's true or not? Options all the time. Are you going to make this transaction? Tulzoma increase the dunya, but you know it's going to decrease the deal. Which trade are you going to make? Which decision are you going to make? That's a difficult decision. And the wise people, they say, I'd rather to lose some of the dunya than losing some of the deal. يقولون بعدينه بدنيا بعدينه بدنيا he sold his religion his soul for the material world بعدينه بدنيا that's why Imam Ali رضي الله عنه was staying in the masjid and crying to Allah a man came in at night he thought that he he will meet Ali Allah next day. But he found somebody in the mihrab crying to Allah. And he said to the dunya, Urri ghayri, urri ghayri, deceive other than me, deceive other than me. And he said, I looked at him. Imam Ali said, what, what's wrong with me? I'm really in trouble if Imam Ali himself saying this. Urri ghayri. The student in college, on college campuses in America, Always been presented with his two choices. Deen or dunya. People in business, Wall Street, in Deen or dunya. People in public life, Deen or dunya. That you get into the internet and you're going to go to watch something wrong on YouTube or go watch, watch something beneficial on YouTube. Are you going to serve the internet for something beneficial or something haram? Those choices be every day present to people. And people every day make wrong choices. You know why? Because for them, the unseen world, it is unseen. And people who have heart, the unseen of the world is the seen world. And the seen world is the unseen world. Like not to be too philosophical, let me explain to you this. You know what the ulama said? There's a man in name of Ajiba. Oh, Rajul Ajib, Ibn Ajiba. Ajib means wonder, a man of wonders. Ibn Ajiba is the greatest scholar. He was making sharh of Hikam Ibn Ata. And he said the following He said, people regarding the 
the, the bounties of Allah upon them are three categories. Three categories of people. Someone looked at the bounty of Allah, the material world, says, Alhamdulillah, I have a watch, Alhamdulillah, I have a shirt, Alhamdulillah, I have, you know, I have a health. Alhamdulillah. But he is what? He's he's really aware of the ni'am, the shirt, which is a good one level. Because the the the, the some people don't even look acknowledge just from Allah. Okay, they think from them. The second, the second, <coughs> the people who the ni'am, the bounties of Allah upon them become equal when they have it, when they don't have it, because they believe the ni'mah itself is a path to Allah. Therefore, the, the absence of it, when you don't have it, it's, it's part of the path to Allah. When you have it, it has to be utilized to Allah. That's what they think. And the third is when people, they are so much connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't see the ni'am. They see the munar. They see Allah only. They see Allah only. They don't see even the ni'am. You hear what I'm saying? This is really a high level of a speciality. Seriously. You know what that means? That means a person get in the morning and say, ma fil qalb illa Allah. In the heart, there's nothing but Allah. Ma fi al qalbi illa Allah. Ma fi al qalbi illa Allah. Ma fi al qalbi illa Allah. Nothing in the heart except Allah. That's an, that's another level. Ma fi al qalbi illa Allah. The heart being captured, occupied by Allah. <coughs> then, through the love of Allah, they interpret the world. Not the opposite. But listen, listen to this. Just to not be too, too philosophical again. Always listen to this very carefully. It says the following. There's some people, the ni'am remind them of Allah. There's some people, Allah remind them of the ni'am. Good this? You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I just said? There's so much with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they looked at the universe, said everything in the universe already from Allah. You hear what I'm saying? They get to know Allah. And whatever they see is it is what it reminds connect them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some people they have to go the material to try to remember Allah. Can I tell you the verse in the Quran what I'm saying? Allah said to Bani Israel, Udkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum. Allah said to Bani Israel. Remember my favor upon you, the children of Israel. You heard that? But Allah said to the Ummah Muhammad, said to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said what? Adhkuruni adhkurkum. Remember me, I remember you. Not my ni'mah. Me, Allah. Washkuruni wa la takfuru. High level. High level. Allah being in a state of connecting with Allah Almighty. Then the world can be interpreted through that love of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it means. Adhkuruni adhkurkum washkuruni wa la takfurum. And that's why a man wanted, they, they want to cut his leg. He has a, a, a wound that is starting what? An infection. They said, how? There is no anesthesia at that time. There is no rest in hospital. Fairfax hospital. There is no anesthesia doctor. 
He said, how can I cut your leg? This is very fun, painful. Because to cut in the leg, you have to cut the bone. It's very difficult to speak about this issue. I know. My children said, Father, don't talk to me. They, they get scared of that. He said to them, wait until you go to Salah. Then you can cut my hand. Are you sure? He said, yeah. This man is easy. Why? Because I become connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I become absent of dunya. In his sajda, they cut his leg. After he finished the salah, until he finished, they said, yes, you don't have a leg. Are you, are you, are you, are you listen to this? That's what Imam Ghazali talked about business here. That he says the person must make the right trade. Their ob ultimate objective is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the dunya, not the material world. That's one that I was sharing with Harun just a minute ago. When Yusuf alayhi salam asked for the position, he knows he's not asking for the position for the position. He asked the position to serve Allah. He said, make me in charge of the treasure of Egypt. I will protect us. I will not cheat. I will not build a private home out of the public money. I will not use it in my pocket. I will keep it. Because I differentiate between the dunya and akhirah. And I know that dunya does not, does not last. Therefore, if you have someone love the dunya on this position, they're going to use it to do this. And that's why when the righteous people left government in some Muslim countries, they say we have to stay in the masjid, the thief took over. You, you see what I'm saying? The righteous person, if he's righteous, he's going to be tested. Listen, it's easy to be tested when you are away. It's more to be tested when you are in. That's the real test. For Imam al Ghazali, rahimahullah, saying that a person should not make a business deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, Oh Allah, I want the dunya, I don't want your akhirah. Somebody says, want the dunya, they want all the dunya. I said, Allah will give you the dunya, but you have nothing for, for you when you come to me in the day of judgment. Nothing. Well, nothing here, by the way, is just nothing. It's like you left with nothing. <laughs> There's something other place you go to. It's not the Jannah that a person goes to the other place. And Allah protects all of us. Mm -hmm. That's why he said to them, Adhabtum tayyibatkum fil hayat dunya wa samtahtum biha. You have really uh, used all your pleasure in dunya. You have nothing in akhirah. But he said you should not make that deal at all. قال من قال لا إله إلا الله مخلصا دخل الجنة. Whoever said لا إله إلا الله sincere from their heart will enter paradise. قيل وما إخلاصه how a person becomes sincere. قال يحزه عما حرم الله that person be protected from what Allah prohibited. Unlawful. Then he be sincere in saying لا إله إلا الله. But say لا إله إلا الله. But he goes to the unlawful things. The person have not matched the statement with their action. وقال أيضا ما أمن بالقرآن من استحلا محارما. A person who believe in the Quran would not make something that Allah says is haram halal. He believe in the Quran. If Allah says don't eat, do use riba. If Allah subhanahu wa taala says don't drink alcohol. If Allah says don't commit zina. And a person does go and do this, that me, and he said he believes in the Quran. How comes you believe in the Quran if you do this? It's contradicting. Okay? Uh, طيب. الثالث. 
ان لا يكتم في المقدار شيئا وذلك بتعديل الميزان والاحتياط به في الكيل. He said that a person, the, the third point, a person must not uh, lie about the measurement of things. You're talking about the, the quantity, quality, and you're talking about quantity. A person cannot lie and deceive on the quantity of things that he sells to people. Right? Uh, قال بعض السلف السلف some of the, the righteous people the past قال عجبت للتاجر والبائع كيف ينجو uh, he said I wonder about the merchants and the buyer how they protect themselves يزن ويحلف بالنهار وينام بالليل he said that he measure and swear by Allah during the day and sleep at night that means he does not go to Hajjud, he does not connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وقال سليمان عليه السلام لابنه يا بني كم تدخل الحبة بين الحجرين كذلك تدخل الخطيئة بين المتباعين. He said, a seed may fall between two rocks. And you may see. He says, sometimes people in business dealing, they cross the line, but they don't see that they have crossed the line. It is not seen to them. Okay. Ah, uh, طيب. وفي قراءة عبد الله بن سعود الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد لا تضعوا في الميزان. مسعود سعد وأقيموا الوزن بالقصد ولا تخسروا الميزان. Okay. And other رواية وأقيموا الوزن باللسان ولا تخسروا الميزان. This is what you must read. والنقصان والرتحان يظهر بميله. They said, you know the scale, there's something in the middle of the scale. And the, 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 the two sides of the scale has to be even. And he said, if a person does a little bit like this, he is in trouble. He'd rather to have it more against him than more for him. Always. Rather, you lose what you have a little bit, Rather than take some of what you don't have, it's not yours. Okay. That's why even marriage, by the way, I tell people, marriage is not 50-50. Nothing 50-50. You are married here? You think marriage is 50-50? Why is not, sister? You do it. It's not 50-50. Marriage is what to give your best. Sometimes, I might give 70% in area, and my wife give 30%. She may give 70% and I give 30%. It's not always 50-50. Yeah? You give your best to it. And, and to me, I don't know how it's 50-50. If my wife the one who get pregnant and have delivered the children, <laughs> one child, it take all the hands of it. You know, it's not 50-50. Seriously. How, uh, honestly, I'm talking about men sitting in this room. Think 50-50? 50 of what? Wallahi, what is 50? Like you spend, uh, have, have paid half rent, have this, so what? If it was working, it's, there's nothing 50. Nothing 50. Yeah, Sam, I can't have one. الله سبحانه وتعالى الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اسمع يا شيخ الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد قال من أحق الناس بحضن صحابتي قال أمك قال ثم من قال أمك قال ثم من قال أمك قال ثم من قال أبوك did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say 50% he gave the mother three times he gave the father one time صح ولا لا يا الله يا الله حملته أمه وهنا على وهن يا شيخ سعيد if you are stand at night and pray to Allah and make dua for your mother all night all day do you think you have pay her back أمك يا أخي سبحان الله حملته أمه وهنا على وهن يا الله على الأم أو the mothers it's amazing 
You cannot pay your mother back. You can't. You think you can pay her back? Okay, I did out of the stopping. <laughs> I've been led to think about my mother. You know, that's why I'm, I'm Allah. Um, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيْلُ الْمُطَفِّينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا تَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ Allah يَظُنُّ أُولَائِكَ أَنَّهُمْ وَبْعُطُونَ لِيَوْمِ الْعَظِيمِ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِ Allah saw to those who've been unfair in the business dealing. When the rights to them, they demand exact rights. When the table turn, they don't give what is supposed to be. They give less what it should than, than what they should give. Right? Subhanallah. Um, and, and therefore, the ulama says that one of the things that make a person uh, really in the devil judgment being stood for a long time, uquq al-ibad. The rights of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have people to stand before him for a long time to ask him about the rights of people. Violation of rights of others. Hukuq al-ibad. Iyakum wa hukuq al-ibad. Right? Al-Rabi' An yastuqa fi si'ri al-waqti wa laakhu minhu shayya. Faqan nahra s.a.w. an talaqa rukba. Look at this. I think Wall Street should take this and put it there. He said a person should not hide the price of the day or do inside trading that's what it says or a person should not go outside like say there's a market here I go like one kilo for the market and I say to you listen I have cheese to sell you there's nothing in the city. This is the last cheese I have. Lying about it. And the price is this much. There's a price for you. You buy it with $100 or $50. You go to the market and find $2. Subhanallah. I was cheated on this. I was too excited to see cheese. I've not seen it for a while. <laughs> this guy <laughs> met me a kilo out of the city and ripped me off. فقال أن لا يتلقى الركبان أن لا يتلقى الركبان ونهى عن النجش أما أن تلقى الركبان فهو يست... أما أن تلقى فيستقبل الرفقة ويتلقى المتاع ويكذب في سعر البلد فقال لا تتلقى الركبان ومن تلقاه فصاحب السلعة بالخيار بعد أن يقدم السوق He said if a person would to uh, uh, lie to someone if a person come to know the real value, let a person have a choice to change their mind. They say, I want to return it because you sell that to me too expensive and it's not what it should be. Right? Because sometimes the sellers say, He said the other things is that people go, for example, to the auction and make a deal with Ali. I said, Ali, I'm selling this camera. I'm going to ask, you know, if you hear somebody says, well, $10, say 15 If you say 15 say 20 If you say 20 say 25 But you don't buy it. Between you and I, if there's no one say more than 25 then you and I, okay, don't have to sell it to you. I bring it next day. He said this is haram. Because you are not actually a buyer. You increasing the price, gambling, to increase the market. Therefore, it's fake trading. Fake trading. You're creating a movement in the market and there's no movement. To create a kind of feeling there's a demand, but there's no actually demand. There's no demand. That's not permissible. Isn't that very sophisticated? Did you hear what this was he saying? Yeah? Subhanallah. Type. We will do last thing. Um,
the other thing is that he says Imam al Ghazali rahimahullah قال from an story he he remember he mentioned a story I would like to mention to you. قد حكي عن رجل من التابعين أنه كان بالبصرة a man from Tabi'in was in Basra in Iraq. وَلَوْ غُلَامٌ بِالسُوسِ يُجَهِزُ لَهُ إِلَيْهِ السُّكَرِ And there's a, a, a young man worked for him in another uh, city called Sous, prepared for him sugar. فَكَتَبَ إِلَيْهِ غُلَامُهُ أَنَّ قَصْبَ السُّكَرَ قَدْ أَصَابَتْهُ آفَةً فِي هَذِي السَّنَةِ فَاشْتَرِ السُّكَرَ He says that the, 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 the sugar is on demand because the sugar cane is not have disease before there's a فاشتري سكرا كثيرا. He said buy a lot of sugar. ولما جاء وقت ربح فيه ثلاثين ألفا. And when when the when the time comes he uh, made a profit of thirty thousand. فانصرف إلى مزيل ف ف فأفكر ليلته وقال ربح ثلاثين ألفا وخسرت نصح رجل من المسلمين. ولا أصبح غدا إلى بائع السكر فدفع إليه ثلاثين ألفا وقال بارك الله لك فيها. قالوا من أين صارت لي؟ قال إني كتمتك الحقيقة الحال وكان السكر تتقلع في ذلك الوقت شوف The man, somebody wrote him the inside trading said sugar it's it gonna be have a problem because many farms in our area where the sugar been uh, farmed is, is, is going down for this guy go to a man who sells sugar and said I want all your sugar he took all his sugar, and the guy said, oh, I'm going to... He didn't tell him what's going on. The side trade. And then the, the sugar price goes up. And he sold was high price. But he went at home, prayed to Allah, and he felt the guilt. He came back and said, listen, you have share of this profit. He said, why? I didn't do it. He said, because I lied. I, did not, I concealed that from you. I concealed the information from you. He didn't know. You are the one who actually the, 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 the man who sells sugar all of the time in this city. I'm the one who just came overnight. I made profit overnight. I should not do that. And give him the profit, subhanAllah. That's called the conscious. Allahumma adina fi man hadayt, aafina fi man aafayt, tawlana fi man tawlayt, fa nasharra ma qadayt, inna ka taqdibu al-haq, wa la yukudu alayk, sallallahu ala muhammadun wa alayhi wa sallam. Jazakum khair, salam alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.